Hello, today I'm reading Hebrews 1. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he has provided purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, He makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, but like a garment, they will be changed. But you remain the same, for your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? The anonymous author is speaking words of encouragement to the persecuted church to stand firm in their faith and realize that Jesus is the Messiah and the one that scripture points to in the Old Testament. To reflect, I have split this into three main takeaways. The first being in verse three. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. What a beautiful image this creates of Jesus being a visible light, tangible for human minds to understand, coming directly from the source. In this case, is God. We can see these beautiful rays of light reflected across the whole world and we know that it comes from the source. Brightening up our whole lives with truth and love. This image of the sun and its rays of light is such a handy image, helping to realise the unity of God and Jesus as one. My second wow moment when reading this passage happened when reading the other half of verse 3, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purifications of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Just take a sec for that to sink in. This is so wild and exciting news. Firstly, sustaining means that he's still at work today. This isn't a passive thing. It's an action and he's still working after death. Also, how crazy is it that Jesus came down from heaven, from the comfy seats next to God, and the best place and the most amazing seat possible, to come to earth, from the top spot in heaven, to help us? I mean, doesn't this really just speak of the love he has for us sinners? 
Finally, my last point again shows the everlasting nature of Jesus's love. In verse 12, it says, you will roll them up like a robe, like a garment they will be changed, but you remain the same. This highlights the verse from verse five regarding the difference between angels, which are ministering spirits, and Jesus, the son of God, who voluntarily became a servant and his essential loving nature is still the same to this very day. Angels sent the message of Jesus coming and Jesus alone is the message. The final thoughts of this chapter are the everlasting nature of Jesus and that he is still present and still with us today. Where can you see Jesus sustaining his sustaining power at work in your life today? To close, I'm going to pray. Oh God, wow. We're so blessed to have the privilege of living in light of your sustaining love. The love that was so great that you sent your son to save us from our own sin. Please help us realise your power in the small things around us today and help us live our lives reflecting in your sustaining and restoring power that others will see your light shining on us in our different workplaces and lives today. Help guide us in the truth of Jesus, knowing that his loving work will never end or run out. Amen.